Yesterday, a commenter asked a very smart question about saving live data from a known good vehicle as baseline information to use for comparison. When you're doing diagnostics on a drivability issue, you have something to compare the live data to. Um, that was a great question, but you know that, that information is already out there in factory workshop manuals. I'm going to show you guys uh, all data DIY, which is what I use to access uh, factory service manuals. There's other ways to go about it. I kind of like all data, uh, but there's many ways to skin the cat. Uh, but I'll show you why a little, you know, $100, $150 Chromebook is an essential companion to my Xtool D7. And these two get used in conjunction with one another. There are various sources to connect to factory workshop manuals. Uh, I prefer all data DIY after looking around at several different manuals. This is where I landed. You might land somewhere else, but regardless, my, my main recommendation here is just get into factory workshop manuals uh, from some source. And I'm going to show you why. So uh, go into my Ford Expedition here. And, you know, here's the all data uh, workshop manual kind of homepage uh, for that particular vehicle. And, you know, o over on this side are some quick jumps to topics that you're often going to be interested in. You know, you're often going to be tracking down a DTC or you're looking at service tables or you want to read up on technical service bulletins, you know, so forth and so on. Um, so that's some quick quick jump information there on that left hand side and uh, you know here in the center uh, we get basically all the systems and components of the vehicle broken down that, that we can jump into and start some deeper research. Uh, finally over here on the right hand side this information tab is going to change as you navigate from screen to screen and it's going to give you drill down information for the particular topic that you're on at the time. So uh, the conversation I was having uh, with the commenter was about saving baseline PID information to use as, as the basis of diagnosis for drivability issues. And I want to show you uh, why workshop manuals are so powerful. So I'm going to go into uh, the powertrain management and from powertrain management, I'm going to jump into computers and control systems. Um, as we get into computers and control systems, over here in our information tab, uh, you can see that, that, that we've drilled down uh, into some specific testing and inspection information. Um, pinout values and diagnostic parameters right here. We're going to go look at this. And jumping into my engine which is a 3.5L GTDI you know here we have that that baseline information that uh, that the commenter was was thinking about you know um, what do you compare these pids back to and and here you're gonna get the base reference information for all of your live data for the PIDs on, on this particular vehicle and you know what what readings or what ranges of readings uh, you should be looking for you know what what does the factory consider normal we'll just take fuel trims as an example and you'll see here on you know long-term fuel trims uh, right here you know we're, we're gonna see readings of negative 20 to plus 20 the factory considers the normal operating range. Um, if you want to look at short term, they're going to consider the normal operating range negative 10 to plus 10. So, you know, this this follows through all of the various PIDs um, that you can get that baseline information. Now, what you can also see is how your reading should change from key on engine off to hot idle. To 30 miles an hour to 55 miles an hour. Um, I got another video out on how to record and save live data. So you could use live data recordings during a drive. You should be using those uh, recordings during a drive and ensure your drive um, has some time 
at, at 30 miles per hour. And sure, your, your drive has some time at 55 miles per hour. Have your uh, variable speed sensor PID up during your drive. Uh, that PID is here, your, your VSS. Your VSS is going to record your, your miles per hour during your drive so that as you're doing your playback, you'll be able to match up you know, your, your readings to your speed. Um, this is the, the, the factory recommendations, right? The factory information, what you would have at your fingertips if you're that Ford dealer uh, technician, you know, working on an issue. And um, speaking of, of the factory approach to, to issues, when you're working from a manual like this, you're, you're also going to get uh, all of the factory recommended pinpoint tests and steps for working your way through a problem. Um, you know, if you're, you know, in, the, in this instance, fuel control, you know, working your way through rich or lean symptoms and what are the steps you, you should be taking next? You know, what, what should you be performing next? Or are you going to check things in a sequence based on commenters on an internet forum? Or do you want to work through the sequence of diagnostics that the factory recommends for chasing down a particular DTC or drivability issue? Um, you know, we can come over to charts where we can just work off of symptoms you know I got a starting concern I got an idle concern uh, I got a hesitation a stumble uh, you know what's what's my concern what's my drivability issue I'm just getting poor fuel economy right so poor fuel economy uh, chart 10 uh, let's make sure you guys see this poor fuel economy chart 10 um, you know we can come back here and go over to our charts and we'll scroll down and we will find uh, here we are we'll find chart 10 and chart 10 is going to deal with poor fuel economy and it's going to give you some contributing factors you know it's it's going to have you think about these items right off the bat hey this could be causing your poor fuel economy right right off the bat um, and then it's going to take you deeper in you know you're going to start off uh, looking at your fuel trims, you're going to start off, you know, looking at control power in the vehicle. You're going to go through steps uh, with your cooling system, you know, with your fuel delivery system, specific systems, and we'll take fuel delivery as an example. It's going to give you a very clear pinpoint test. So for fuel delivery system, we want to go to pinpoint test. H C. Uh, so we're just going to back back out of um, the symptoms charts. Actually, we won't have to. We can come over here on the information tab, and we will see pinpoint tests right there as an option. We'll select that. Now we're going to come down and we're going to look for H C. And we can go first to the introduction and we can read about fuel delivery systems and you know get some background knowledge in our head, get some understanding of the electrical connectors involved and, and what's going on in fuel delivery system. You know, this is just gonna be some background knowledge. And after we soak up that background knowledge, then we can jump into the actual pinpoint tests and this is going to walk us through um, check the system integrity and what are the steps we're going to do there uh, did we pass this test yes or no uh, if 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 no you know what step are we jumping to next what DTCs are we looking for and and what um, what steps are we going to take to repair so Again, do you want to work in the order of commenters randomly suggesting things on internet forums? Um, or do you want to work in the order of a trained ASE mechanic following a dealership factory service manual? I don't know about you. I like to go the organized approach. I like to work from the, the workshop manual. Um, back to the home screen here. 
you know, I, I do the same thing with my service. I follow uh, the service tables as recommended by the factory. I shorten the durations on most of my fluids. You know, I'm changing fluids a lot more often than these guys recommend. But I'm making sure that I'm touching all the points and all the inspections and, and everything that, that the factory manual suggests for a, a particular vehicle. And um, another thing that I'm always doing is as I'm performing maintenance on, on any vehicle, um, you know, I'm, I'm sticking with the procedures that the factory recommends and they're going to give you a step-by-step -step procedure, you know, which sequence you bleed brakes in for that vehicle. Um, and they're just going to give you step by step by step, you know, what the factory recommendations are for, for how to do any type of particular maintenance or repair. And to me, that is just incredibly valuable uh, information. So back home here for a moment. And, you know, what I really like about all data specifically, and I'm not necessarily here to plug all data. I don't make a dime from all data. I don't make a dime from anything about anything connected to this YouTube. I make my money elsewhere. Um, this is all just, just advice. But what I like about all data is, you know, whether I'm looking at a Ford, whether I'm looking at a Fiat, you know, whether I'm looking at an Audi, um, any, any different make or model, uh, you know, back, back to the Ford for a second. Here's the visual layout. Here's the way the data is arranged, right? Um, if I switch and I go to the Fiat, guess what? Same visual layout. The data is arranged the same way. I have the same menus and we're going to have the same thing with the Audi. Everything's going to feel familiar. So all data has taken factory workshop information from all these different brands, but they've mashed it all into a common format. So when I go to work on any vehicle, I'm not having to think in a new format. I'm not having to look in a, in a different place and remember a different table of contents. Uh, I'm always operating in a very comfortable environment. Um, and so, yeah, this is, this is what I like. This is the way I do it. And I really can't imagine using my X tool uh, without this information myself. Um, I just find it incredibly helpful, uh, even things as simple as just having all of your DTCs, uh, clearly defined and, and described, um, you know, uh, every DTC is, is listed out in here. And we'll give you a discussion, we'll give you pinpoint tests, we'll give you steps and procedures to follow based on the DTC that you're dealing with. I find that incredibly helpful. Um, and with the scan tools and, and using the scan tools, I find it helpful just to be able to look up all the PID definitions and, and get all of the PID parameters. These things to me are just invaluable. So. Um, yeah, that's the way I'm doing it, and I hope that's helpful to somebody out there, and I hope uh, you, you find some workshop manual that you're comfortable with the layout and the pricing. You know, I think here I, I pay like $125 uh, for three years subscription, and that is per vehicle, but, you know, $125 over three years is not a lot of money to throw at a, at a car or a truck uh, from a service standpoint. And, and get all this type of information that lets me do my work at home and do my work at home very, very confident that I'm doing my work in the same sequence, the same way that that dealer tech would.